When you come to a crossroad and run into the winner and the quitter in you, listen to the winner. The quitter will never take you down the road you want to travel. I believe we all have a winner in us. There is a winner inside of you. Sometimes we just have been around negativity for way too long, developed a mindset of a winner. The truth is most people give up on their dream. Most people give up on their dream to live the average lifestyle. But it really doesn't matter what most people do. What do you do? Because you are different. You will never give up on your dream. You will never not listen to the average. You will always listen to the winner in you. You will believe in yourself when no one else does. You will believe in yourself when you have no reason to believe. And you will never, ever quit. I know some of you are going through a rough time right now. Some of you are going through the fight of your life. Fighting for your future, fighting for your career, fighting for your family. Some of you are fighting for your life. And I'm telling you, don't quit. Do not give in. I know life can be tough. I know life can wear you down. But if you just stick it out, even if you don't get the result you will find, the character you show will be your reward. The fighting spirit you develop will be the reward. And it will serve you well for the rest of your life. Fight for what you want now or fight against what you don't want later. You choose. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare settle. Don't you dare get back down. Not today or any other day. When the tough moments come, never forget you are in that moment writing your own legacy. In that tough moment, you are setting the standard for your character. Do you have the character? Well, do you? When you come up to a crossroad and run into the winner and the quitter in you, listen to the winner. When you make a commitment to yourself, you make sure you see it through. Never, ever quit. Even if you don't get the result, you will find the character you show will be your reward. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare ever settle. And don't you dare ever back down. Fight for what you want or fight against what you don't want at a later time. And always know that God is right there with you. Just allow God to guide and direct you. And you will always be a winner. Good morning. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an author, an addiction recovery coach, a life coach, and the host of this show, the Take Your Life Back Today radio show. You can also find us on YouTube and see a video version of this on channel Take Your Life Back Today show on YouTube. Today we're going to talk about the practice of forgiveness. Brother, sister, mother, father, husband, wife, son, daughter, friend, colleague, or neighbor. Our relationships contain many people with the potential to hurt us, very often in small ongoing ways. Sometimes in trying to be good, uh, people, we brush these hurts aside thinking I'm not a vindictive or over, uh, overly sensitive person. These things shouldn't bother me, we say, but they do, don't they? They do because our egos are like magnets and resentments are attracted to them. What is uh, the impact of holding uh, uh, onto these resentments? Do we hold back in our lives? Do we argue with people? Do we gossip with people? Well, let's see. What does the Bible teach about this? Jesus taught the art of forgiveness. Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or my sister who, who sin against me? Up to seven times, Jesus answered. I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times in Matthew 18, 21 through 22. Does this mean we are to forgive 539 times exactly? Yes. And more, the writings of Emmanuel Swedenborg explore the depth of the biblical message and say by this, he meant that they would forgive as often as they sinned. Their forgiveness was to know no limits, that is, was to be eternal and timeless, which is holy. Folks, patience with the process. The Lord promises that forgiveness is possible. Even when hurt seems to, uh, uh, too great to repair, God tells us, I will remove from the heart of stone and give them the heart of flesh. And that you can find in Ezekiel eleven nineteen. We experience a heart of stone when we are too angry, too selfish, or too frozen by the pain that others have caused us in our own lives. A heart of flesh, while it may be vulnerable, it is compassionate. A heart of flesh sees 
that while we are feeling pain, the other person may be hurting for the pain they caused us. We can get so caught up in ourselves that we do not even notice another, uh, another person in your life might be struggling from the offense. It is true that people need to be held accountable for their actions. But these people also need patience from us. As it was said, be patient with me in Matthew 18, 26. Practicing patience with another person, holding on to the hope and the vision for our relationship with them is the true act of compassion. We need to invite the Lord into the journey and ask for the courage to, uh, that it takes for us to be patient with another person and the understanding needed to see them uh, to who uh, they are and how to teach them to forgive. Resentment and the faulty world view. The idea that uh, forgiveness means that sins are washed away is one of the reasons why we sometimes shy away from forgiveness. We sometimes think that forgiveness means forgetting and that feels wrong. Sometimes we feel we need our resentment to educate us about the people in the world around us and guide us in the ways we should act towards them. We feel like we need our memory of past hurts so that we can maintain boundaries with people around us. But the Lord is the all, is all knowing and mercy itself, therefore, uh, must be a way for knowing and forgiveness to exist together. A clear-headed forgiveness that forgets nothing and forgives all. Here's one way of thinking about it. Think about this now, my friends. How it might feel to look at someone who has hurt us and not feel anger. Sounds pretty impossible, doesn't it? Is this even possible? This is how the angels are described. Those who have charity hardly notice the evil in another person, but instead notice all the goods and the truths that are in his or her and on his, his or her evils and false cities. They place a good interpretation of such a nature are all angels. It's being something they have from the Lord who bends everything evil into good. He turns evil into good. Listen up. Now, this doesn't negate the fact that we do not protect ourselves from people who make a habit of hurting our, uh, us daily. The key is to invite the Lord uh, into the process. It is the Lord who will keep us separated from our resentment. If we let him, we must be rigorous and disciplined in an, uh, an, uh, uh, our endeavors to forgive. We must get used to naming each hurt and then putting it away and asking the Lord to keep the resentment from us. He is the only one with the power to do this. And it must be done 70 times 7, which means all the time, without any limit set. The power of forgiveness, when we forgive others, there is a freedom where we are no longer shackled by our own anger. It moves us from selfish illusions to a beautiful reality. It is hard work, but letting go of fantasies that we can change the past, that we can change others, or even, or even that we are the ones who can change ourselves, open room for God to help us ward off the resentment we feel. Each time we forgive, it paves the way for the next time we need to forgive. Practicing the courage and patience and letting the Lord into the process of forgiveness becomes like exercising a muscle. It grows stronger and stronger. Together with him, we can come to a point where forgiveness is annuitive, a blessed way to live each and every day in our lives. My friends, call me at 844-475-HELP because together, you and I, we can help take each other's lives back. And always remember to be good to yourselves and never forget to be good to other people, no matter how bad they treat you. A simple smile to that old man next door, that old lady, that neighbor, can change that neighbor's life forever and it can change your life. May God bless each and every one watching me, especially over in Asia today. May God bless you. We'll talk to you guys real soon. And we'll be back tomorrow and have a great day. Mm -hmm.